Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Lucifer Season 5, Part 1. A great season. If you have not seen all of Lucifer Season 5, Part 1, uh, do not listen to this because I'm going to be jumping straight into spoilers, so uh, you have been warned. So... Jump, like I said, how I felt about the season in general. I thought it was great. They did a lot of interesting things because I was so curious, like how this whole situation was going to play out with Lucifer for Michael. I thought that like back and forth between them would have been in, like a, a more crux of the season than it was in a sense. Well, I mean, because a lot of stuff that has to be considered for one, the way the season's broken down. Because like I said, this was originally supposed to be a longer season anyway, but I guess because it's longer, and maybe potentially there being a sixth season, maybe also maybe they didn't get to finish all the episodes because of everything that's going on. Maybe. I don't know. I haven't looked into the exact reasoning why they broke it into two parts. Maybe this was always a plan. Maybe it wasn't because typically Netflix doesn't do the whole thing of like a whole bunch of episodes because it was going to be like 16 episodes was kind of what things came about came out like after season four came out regardless tangents and all that. But um, the fact of the matter is probably in the grand scheme of things you probably in the grand scheme of the season you probably see a lot more of Michael but obviously he does a lot more. A little more behind the scenes stuff, a little bit, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. Regardless, let's just, let's just kind of, you know, break it down and get into it. Uh, but the first fact of the matter is, I love that we start off with Lee. I'm like, oh my god, you've been a starter like the past three. This is the third time you've been a starter. You were the start of season three, you were the start of season four, and now you're the start of season five. I was actually kind of like, oh, was something terrible going to happen? Because it's like, oh, you're living a good life and stuff. Like, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I thought like everything was going to go to shit or something like that. I, did, I didn't know what to really expect. And technically it did go to shit because it's like, he sees Lucifer and I was like, oh, you're in hell. I was like, oh, you poor bastard. He was like, oh, I got, you know, things are finally working out for me. It's like, oh, you're about to die in three, two, one. And now Lucifer's having to explain everything to him. I should also point out, I think it's so interesting that as the show has progressed, and I think it's like a little, a bit of an interesting thing that they expound upon how hell works more and more every season. And just, I mean, it makes sense in the grand scheme of things because demons are the ones that torture you. So, of course, they would be the people that make up your marriage. Memories. It also kind of makes you realize, like, oh, with all the people that are in hell and all the demons having to play the roles of whoever it is and all these different people's memories, just kind of puts in the grand scheme of things, like, literally how many damn demons there are. You know, because there's never been, like, a quantifiable number. I don't even know if they've ever really quantified, like, exactly how many angels are out there. But regardless, so it's just it's just kind of an interesting thing. And especially, kind of obviously, how the rules work, because it's like, oh, because Lee was like, oh, let's find out who killed me, he pulled off the mask, there's no face. It's like, well, yeah, because you never saw the face of the person who killed you. So, of course, my, this is all based on your own memories and stuff like that. So, I just thought that was so interesting. And I like how this case ended up being like a dual-sided case because while... Because Lucifer kind of takes it upon himself to... Um, investigate the case because he finds out like wait we're in los angeles right now and for him and it's the time difference because it's like on earth it's been two months for him it's been thousands of years you know um and it's just kind of a thing of just kind of like well i accept i'm in hell like i'm ruling hell i'm the king of hell so i just you know he just he just had because this also means protecting the people he cares about most in particular chloe he doesn't ever want to put her life in danger too because like you know this is the life he lived on earth and it would involve putting everyone he cares about in danger if he doesn't like you know if he doesn't stay in hell and kind of keep everything in check and so i just thought that was interesting in a grand um scheme of things obviously but it's just like like i said just like the duality of that case because like chloe and Maze are working together on it um, on Earth, they've been kind of partnering up and stuff like that. And Ella's super pissed because it's like, oh, Lucifer didn't say anything before he left. It's like, we don't really need it. And then Maze is like, Ellen, read the room. Love that being a bitch. She's constantly getting her name wrong the entire season. Uh, but it's interesting. She's consistent with the wrong name. She was never like Angelica or something like that. It's like, no, it was always Ellen. So she got part. She was with there with the L part, obviously. But um, nevertheless, it's like, read the room. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up the whole Lucifer thing. It's just like, you know, she's like, I just, I missed the big guy. You know, and it's just like, you know, um, for um, Chloe, it's like, no, no, no. I never really thought about it. It's like, you know, kind of hiding the fact that she has been thinking about it. She's been throwing herself into work, working with Maze, partying and stuff like that, just to make sure that she doesn't... Um, kind of think about it and then like you know obviously it's like you know charlie's two months now obviously what that means for linda and aminadel i thought it was interesting when aminadel was like oh you're not going to sell drugs at my club without cutting me and i was like oh 
I was like, Dave, oh, this is a swerve. It's like, nah, of course not. Why would it be? Aminadale's I still the upstanding angel that he always has been. I mean, granted, obviously we know he's kind of strayed a lot over the course of the series, but obviously he's always kind of trying to stray back to the path of righteousness. Uh, but regardless, the fact of the matter is, um, it was all a ploy to get, it's like, oh, I'm going to bust this drug ring at the, at the club. It's like, oh, you know, but then it's like, oh, like, apparently like he gets super it up you know he's super justice um about a lot of stuff because it's like oh like some people are jaywalking and stuff like that and it's like someone uh, one particular person was like a three-year-old or something but like i mean it was like rules are rules type of thing so he's a stickler for that so obviously it fits who he is um but nevertheless like obviously like i said it's just interesting like the, the investigations out because it's like you know, like I said, Lucifer handling things on the hell front, Chloe handling things on the uh, surface front. I even love, like, he sent a demon to possess the uh, body of a guy that died. He's like, whoa, you're the detective? Yeah, Lucifer said you started. Uh, you said you'd know what that was about. And I love the guy's like, oh, this body's so messed up. He's like, wait, is that Mazaki? Like, I wonder what that's supposed to be. Was that just kind of like, oh, shit, I didn't know Mazaki was on Earth. That's crazy. Oh, well. I'm about to go back and you know so I thought that was interesting but also it just kind of caught off guard because it's like wait you know because it's like oh this is a message from Lucifer you're trying to help me with the case it's like my partner's still trying to help me out but obviously it's like you miss him like crazy and it's just you know there's a lot there um and obviously you know Lucifer you know and Lee spending time together you know because Lee just kind of uh, things kind of didn't work out for Lee, obviously, like, in his life, because he always kind of did the wrong thing a lot of times, and I even love that at one point, he's like, oh, tell me about this detective of yours, and Lucifer's opening up, but he's like, I know what the hell you're doing, that you're trying to get on my good side so I don't send you back to being tortured, he's like, come on, man, you can't blame me, but that just pissed Lucifer off, because it's like, you're using Chloe to make him, like, try and warm your, it's like, you're so selfish that you're trying to manipulate my emotions into helping you out, like, you know, but then, so it's like, oh, I'm going to torture you. I'm going to take you to the memory you're scared of the most. Because obviously, hell is all about, you know, you, you're punishing, you're punishing yourself. I mean, that's, it's hard to get out of hell because you're so intent on punishing yourself. So getting out is not the easiest thing. Like, I don't, I think Charlotte, um, well, his mom is like one of the few examples of someone going to hell and um, getting back out after kind of being there. It's a, it's a different situation, obviously. Well, her circumstances are a little different, but it's like that's only one of the few instances. I think maybe the only instance in the show we've ever heard of really anyone kind of getting out of hell after going there, you know, or rather being there, you know. But uh, regardless, I just thought it was just interesting. Um, obviously, it's like. Both of them got something out of the case. Like, obviously, Chloe talking with Lee's sister, which that case ended up being weird because I thought, I kept being like, oh, his sister's acting suspicious. She just happens to be there. And it's like, oh, I thought when Chloe went back to her place, I was like, oh, she's going to turn on you because it turns out, but it's like, oh, the hands are on the table. It's like, wait, what? And then the guy's like, where's the money? And then, like, she's laughing. And he's like, why are you laughing? I was like, she knows where the money is, isn't she? Isn't this whole thing an act? It turns out it's not. I was like, oh, she's like, oh, Lee must have like burned all that money rather than paying back his debt and everything. Like he just, once again, he just did the wrong thing again. But regardless, despite everything that her brother put her through, like she's like, the fact of the matter, I miss him, you know, regardless. Because it's just a thing of like, they, it's that thing of like, you just don't have that chance to really, you know, it's it's that too late type of situation. I mean, obviously, it's more so like that on Lee's side of things, and obviously that resonates with Lucifer, which even Lee's like, you could have taken me to any memory, but you took me to this memory where I didn't go inside. I wasn't, I didn't stay for my family. Like, oh, they didn't really, because he's like, oh, I would have messed up, whether it be a day, a week, or uh, months, or years from now, I would have, well, at least Lucifer was saying he was going to mess up like that. But um, it's just that the aspect of like, okay, so like I said, each one of them kind of getting something from this case. And obviously Lucifer shows up to save Chloe. Oh, it's not Lucifer. It's Michael. Because Lucifer's like, no, Chloe's, uh, you know, the detective. She can handle this on her own. And I think I get, it's just, it is, it's a fear thing because it's like, I kind of left her behind. And it's like, I don't, do I, I think, I think he felt a little guilty till like, do I have the right to kind of just go back into her life? It's like, no, like I made this choice to do, I mean, once again, it's like, it's been a thousand years for him too. So it's just, I think that, that fear and guilt kind of has grown in him. Like, maybe, should I have just stayed? Should I have tried to find another way? It's like, no, 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 this was the only way, right? 
this is the only this, no because he's like oh I'm this is my res- I made this choice I'm being responsible but it's like even if you are being responsible trying to be selfless that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt still you know that he doesn't hurt being separated from Chloe. So there's that whole thing. There's obviously also the Maze thing I thought was interesting. Like, she made a move on Chloe. I was like, oh. It's like, because for Maze, she's kind of spiraling a little bit because it's like Lucifer being gone. The whole thing with, um, the whole thing with, uh, Eve. It's like, she, she's kind of, you know, spiraling because she, she wants to feel that hole in her heart. And obviously, Chloe is like, we need to kind of take a step back. Because obviously, like, Maze blames Lucifer. And that, that comes up later on that the conversation never really goes in depth. But I'm like... I'm surprised. I mean, it also, I guess it also shows you how obviously Lucifer's still a work in progress, even though a lot of times he thinks, oh, I'm done. I'm finished. It's like, no, you're always going to be a work in progress. That's very, that's the very human side of him, whether he realizes it or not. But just the way he handles Maze throughout the course of the season, it's just kind of like, you know, like the fact that no matter what, he talks down to her a lot. It just doesn't really, at least, I mean, he always has trouble seeing things from other people's perspectives. That's why every time he always makes every case about him, you know, um, but the whole point is like, because Maze just, you know, she felt like, oh, Lucifer left me behind again. But it's like, Lucifer was kind of like, you know, I'm surprised he didn't lean into it because my thought was like, hell's not your home anymore. Like, you found a home here. You found a life of your own as a bounty hunter. You have a best friend in Linda. Obviously, things are a little complicated between you and Chloe, but you and Chloe have always been close. You have Trixie. So it's like, you have a life here. Like, hell was never your home anymore. So I'm I'm surprised Lucifer didn't lean into that, but he's so caught up in his own stuff that he doesn't recognize like hearing that what that would mean for Maze. But I think that's what I think if Lucifer had just taken time to talk to Maze and tell her stuff like that, like make her realize like I didn't take you back with me because this was something I had to do alone. Like I'm the one that had to abandon my life here. You shouldn't have to be the one to abandon your life. It's on me. If he had told her something like that, then he, I, I think a lot of issues this season could have been resolved. But obviously that's the thing. Once again, Lucifer can't see outside of himself a lot of times. It takes a little while before he's able to, you know? So, um, so there's that. Um, what I also thought was interesting, like I guess Michael's been watching the, all this stuff go down. So, cause he knew enough to kind of play the role of Lucifer ahead of time. So I'm like, he must have been watching enough of Lucifer's life. But even I'm like, you came to be like, you want to be Lucifer 2.0 and everything. And it's like, why are you so terrible at being Lucifer? Like, you're trying to be Lucifer. You're putting on the accent and everything. Like, why don't you lean into being more like Lucifer? It's just like, but I guess for him, the reason why, in the grand scheme of things, because Aminadel even brings it up, it's like, you've always felt like having this inferiority to Lucifer. You know, so it's like, I guess for him, it was like, no, no, no I'm going to take Lucifer. I'm going to be a better version of Lucifer, Lucifer and then I'm going to rip his life apart. That's what's kind of interesting because the trailer does lean more into like what he does later on about like, oh, I'm going to uh, take Lucifer's life. Uh, initially, he was going to rip it apart. But then like he started kind of actually like, oh, Chloe's kind of liking this new version of Lucifer. He's like, you know what? No, no, I'll lean into it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this life of Lucifer's. And, and then eventually I'll tell Chloe the truth. So even he kind of started falling for Chloe because it's like, oh, she she likes me and cares for me now. So it's like, you know, she likes this version of me because this is Lucifer 2.0. This is me being me. So obviously she likes this side of me. She likes this better than Lucifer 1.0. So that means she likes me more than Lucifer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like he started getting in his own head about that, I think. Um, but it's just like I said, he just he was doing all the wrong things because even in the interrogation, Chloe was leaning in and being like, "Oh, you want to make like a, a sex pun or something?" He's like, "No," and she's like, "What?" She's like, "Cause she talked to Linda," and I thought that was such a beautiful moment where uh, Linda even saying that they are actually a perfect match for each other because Linda's like, "Oh no," because Chloe's like, "Oh, I get it. You want me to remind him of who he is and kind of push him into it." And she's like, "Linda's like, no, that's not what I said." It's like, "Thanks, Linda." It's like. You are exactly like Lucifer, and it's like it makes that them being a couple even cuter because it's like you handle therapy the same way where you're like you take what Linda says and you go to the extreme of it, or you do the completely opposite. And I was like, that's why Linda was like, you two are actually perfect for each other. And she's like, I, I just thought that was so cute because obviously Chloe didn't get it, but we as the audience are like, oh yeah, that's super Lucifer move what she just did. I thought that was kind of you know uh, pretty neat in the grand scheme of things, um, but. uh Nevertheless, it didn't take long for Chloe to kind of see through Michael's deception, though. I thought it was kind of interesting. I should also note, I love that, like, that second case, because that's the one about space and stuff. Like, oh, that, um, 
that kind of like space mission thing where it's like oh they have the psychological angles of like what it means being isolated for people and you know that type of experience it's mainly rich people and i love sharon osborne as one of them i'm like i was because i had to pause i was like is this sharon osborne it's like oh it's sharon osborne playing sharon osborne i was like that's so crazy what I also thought was neat, and it's just it's kind of interesting when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, is that Kobe Bell was he was one of the dudes in charge of that whole thing. Like he was obviously neck deep in the case and everything. Uh, it's interesting because he's on this, which is obviously a Vertigo property, which is under DC. He was in The Gifted on Fox, which Lucifer was originally obviously on Fox, uh, but he was on The Gifted, which was a Marvel property. Yes, it was like X Men, Fox. Marvel, but still, so it's just interesting. Once again, crossing lanes a little bit. I'm thinking too much about it, but it, just, it was just kind of interesting uh, to me, just uh, uh, the thought about that. Uh, but regardless, I'm going. Uh, if you're curious who I was talking about, he's the dude who played Agent uh, Turner on um, The Gifted, if you're familiar with The Gifted. Um, he was in the second case, is all I'm trying to say. It just, I thought the correlation and interesting, you know, Marvel, uh, DC crossover in that regard, <sighs> tangents and all that. Um, which even that was kind of an interesting case because that case was kind of about misunderstanding because it turns out like the woman he was uh, sleeping with misunderstood and thought he was having an affair with uh, one of the people. But it's like he was secretly meeting with her because they were trying to take down the dude who ran the whole program because he didn't really believe in the space thing. He was just kind of doing it reluctantly and stuff like that. So he just wanted to kind of be up there with people like Musk and stuff like that. So it's like I want my name to be kind of in that same conversation. So he didn't really believe in this project. So they were trying to expose him. But she thought like, oh, you're trying, you're, you're sleeping with her. So she, because of the miscommunication, because he didn't tell her because it's like no I'm trying to protect you so obviously there's a deeper thing obviously you know you can correlate that with um the main overarching you know story and everything but it's just like that ended up being an aspect to that I also thought it was kind of you know uh, kind of circling to like the main overcourse of things um why did I say overcourse uh regardless the fact of the matter is Maze helping Michael it's like Maze does that a lot doesn't she she kind of helps the other side she helped Kane you know, so now it's like, oh, now you're helping um, Michael. It's a little interesting how you kind of work with kind of the bad guys of the season. I think it's kind of interesting, especially when it means kind of screwing over Lucifer a bit, you know. I mean, she did that in season one, too, when she was working with Aminadol to kind of mess with Lucifer as well. So and that whole thing, you know, so it's just it constantly ends up being a thing. Um they have a very complicated relationship. It's like, yeah, it seems like a lot of stuff gets repaired, but obviously it's all parts of a bigger, they're all symptoms of a bigger issue, you know, um, we're just like, Ma Maze used to feel like she was so close to Lucifer, but since they came to Earth and everything, it just seems like less and less like, oh, she's further and further from his mind. Of like, It's not even like, oh, I love you type of thing. It's just like, we've always been partners together, and now that position's almost been kind of taken by Chloe. So obviously she resents Chloe a little bit, because Chloe, you know, rejected her, so obviously she kind of has issues in that, but also she wants to get back at Lucifer, which Lucifer brought up a point later on. He was like, if you wanted to go to hell, why didn't you just get a Minadel to get you take you there he has wings as well you know but i think maze wasn't 100 percent sure so that's why she was just kind of like walked away but once again it's a situation where linda was like listen to people let understand their issues but lucifer kind of you know once again he has a hard time doing that even though he's like all right just tell me what you want you know and so but he didn't once again he this the stuff he applied to chloe he didn't 100 percent apply to everyone else he tried to he did it a little bit with dan but you know he didn't go as full on as he was trying to with chloe um but regardless i'm, I'm kind of mixing and matching a lot of stuff because i'm all over the place i do apologize um but um i thought it was you know obviously chloe figured it out pretty early on i'm circling back to it uh about michael just because you know Maze and him being together and it's like and I looked, her justification being like, that moment is what set it in her mind of like, that's not Lucifer. Because Lucifer would never do something like that to hurt me. I mean, especially now that after everything that's kind of happened between them, especially last season, of course he wouldn't do that anymore. Um, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, you know, because yes, they've had their complications with the whole candy thing. But obviously even that was just kind of like him trying to divert stuff away from you know, that being a thing, you know, um, but obviously it's like, you could tell Chloe figured it out early on too, because like, you could tell she was leaning into it, even telling maids, it's like, no, I think, I think things are going to happen between me and, um, 
Lucifer. I think we're going to take it to the next step. She's like, wait, you're going to bang him? She's like, and May, it's interesting that even May has her lanes because she's like, yeah, I might have problems with Chloe right now. I might have issues with Lucifer, but I'm not going to let this happen because like, she'd rather, if they were going to be together, yes, like she has issues with them, but she, if Chloe's going to be intimate with someone, obviously she'd rather be with the real Lucifer, not just, you know, fake Lucifer and Michael. But it's like, no, like the fact of the matter is he also like his whole thing of like, and once again, we learned how Michael's power works. And I thought it was so interesting because we've never really seen the instance of the rest of his siblings really displaying power. Like the only other person we really knew anything special about was Azrael because we know her blade that ended up being a whole storyline point. But other than that, like, we've never really experienced anything special about the other side. I mean, to be fair, we know Aminadel has the whole freezing time ability, which obviously he's kind of lost, uh, or, or slowing down time at the very least. He slows it down to the point it feels like it's frozen. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, like, we never really got instances of other people. So learning, like, oh, Michael's thing, whereas Lucifer's whole thing is about desire, Michael's is about fear. And it's like the moment, it's like, what do you fear the most? And it's like, Chloe was almost like, wait, what? Like, even more reason why, obviously, that wasn't Lucifer. But, um... Because, <clears throat> like I said, the whole point is, like... <clears throat> Abinadel brings it up, like... Michael, like, resents Lucifer. Because when he was in heaven, and he is explaining this to Maze, like... When I was back in the Silver City, all I ever heard... Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer. Like, oh my god, how great he... Oh my god, look how much our brother has matured. Oh, he's so awesome. He went back to hell on his own, all the time he spent trying to push him to go back to hell, and he did it on his own, wow, that's nuts, that's crazy, so for him, it's just like, no, he's the one that rebelled against dad, and we're praising him for doing something he should have done without reward, but I think that speaks volume, he did it without reward, you, you want to make your brother seem so selfish and stuff like that, but the fact of the matter is, he was willing to do that, kind of speaks volume, but Michael doesn't want to see anything that could put Lucifer in a good, like, because he's like, no, I'm the better twin, but like I said, it's always been, he's always felt inferior just because it's like and the way they kind of paint him he's always kind of been a little bit cowardly because i because i always wonder like why he's kind of got that hunch like why he kind of because even lucifer kind of pokes fun at him about it like the way he kind of like like hunches a little bit or at least kind of has like one shoulder up like is like is that like an injury or is that supposed to be like a character defect in the sense that like he's um He's so, like, almost meekish. He's so conniving and stuff like that. But it, it's because of, like, his meekishness that he feels weak that he has to kind of outsmart and manipulate people to make himself feel better. Because even Aminadel is kind of like, yeah, like... Because that's what made Aminadel figure it out, too. He was like, yeah, like, it's just that. Brings up all these fears. And the moment he heard the term fear, he's like, I, Michael, of course, you know? So, um, I just thought that, you know... Um, um, interesting. Obviously, like, Aminadel went to get Lucifer about everything that's going up. It's like, alright, I'm gonna go up there, you hold the fort. And Aminadel's like, wait, what? It's like, well, technically, you, you know, the position of person running hell has to be an angel. So Aminadel's there, and I love that some dude is being tortured, and then, like, the, the demons are in clown uniforms, and they're like, should we kind of keep going to this? And Aminadel's almost like, go ahead. And they get back to work and stuff like that, torturing the dude that they're torturing. Um, but obviously, it's like Michael, to break Chloe's connection with Lucifer, tells her the truth. But she's like, obviously like, oh, you're lying. But then Lucifer never being able to tell a lie. When she asks him, he tells her the truth. And it's like, obviously, he's known for over a year because his mom told him all that time ago. And I thought that was such a... Because I was wondering, like, okay, so what's going to be... I mean, it's like, last place we left off, you guys were good. But it's like, so how are things going to get complicated? It's like, now this is a wrench in a relationship. I mean... And I'm surprised Lucifer never really leaned into it. Like, the fact of the matter is saying, like, Chloe, like, that scared me so much, too. That's why I always kept you at a distance, like, for a while. Like, when I obviously had feelings for you, I kept you at a distance. Because, like, I mean, obviously during season two and parts of season three, that, like, that was kind of, like, something that was there. Well, more so in season two, that was an issue for him. Because he was like, oh, you were kind of put in my path. This is part of dad's manipulations. So for him, like, he kind of pushed Chloe away because he thought, like, your feelings for me, you can't control yourself. It's something dad set up, so I'm not... I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to, um, lean into this. I'm not going to follow my feelings because like how you feel about me isn't even real. And obviously it's like, wait, your mom told you this. You didn't tell me. And obviously for Chloe, it's like, it puts you in a very existential thing. Cause it's like, wait, God literally made me for you. What? That is a lot to basically be like my entire existence. I exist for you and no one else, you know? 
Um, I even love that she was like, I'm done with all the celestial stuff. I just want a regular case. The case takes her to church and she's like, to a, a church where like nuns and stuff and like that. And she's like, of course. She's like, that's that's hilarious. I Because I love that also being a case that Aminadel works with her, which I even love the whole thing of like, yeah, because Lucifer's like, oh, I've got so little time. I need to I need to talk to Chloe. I need to fix all this before I have to go back to hell. Because, you know, I'll get my brother. So I need to hurry up and do this so my brother can come back. Wait, you're here. What the hell are you doing here? It's like, God, Father reached out to me. It was like, no, hell doesn't need to be looked after anymore. And it's like, wait, what? Which is effed up in many different levels. Because even he's like, what do you mean it doesn't need to be looked after anymore? You mean the position where I spent so long? Not just the thousand years in between season four and five. It's the time I've constantly had to look after hell ever since being banished. And you're telling me like it's not necessary. But even now, the moment he was like, oh yeah, I heard Father's voice. I was like, was it Michael? I was like, that's what I was thinking. Like, Michael, you sure Michael didn't fake that? Because Aminadel talked about the fact is that their brother is the right hand to God now. Because, like, no other angel really talks to, like, Michael's the one kind of barking out orders. Because, like, father, he's the one that's whispering in their father's ear to be like, oh, this and this and that. So it's like, no one, dad's not really talking to anyone else directly. Michael's the one kind of doing everything, kind of whispering in his ears which we never leaned into that too much but i guess that's also why michael kind of has the freedom and look i mean he's michael he's an archangel he's he's probably he's one of the top dogs so he's able to kind of have a lot more freedom than probably the others are allowed and everything but but circling back to it that case was really interesting in a sense that like oh because of aminadel like we kind of learned like oh these nuns and stuff were charmed by him and she was like wait do you have mojo like Lucifer does? Because he was like, no. But then all those nuns were attracted. And he was like, what? So it's like, at first it's like, oh, do people? And they're like, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Oh my God. Even later on when that lady's like, I got something to talk to you about. And then she's, and he's like, go ahead, just let it go. And it's like, oh, and she starts making out with him. And I loved it. Dan's like, wow, he's about to stop. But Lucifer's like, no, 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 no. You know, we, we can't, no shortcuts, Daniel. You know, let, let him work, let him work it. And then Dan's like, you're right. And they're sitting there watching this. And, and that's when um, Aminadel understands what his power is. Because he tried it on that pop star, but it didn't work. So it made him go like, oh, yeah, like, so her faith must not be real or something like that. It's it's interesting because now we get a better understanding of their powers. Their powers aren't like they are a reflection. And I thought that was so interesting when you break that down. So Aminadel reflects people's his people's love for God reflects back at them through Aminadel. So each one of them is a mirror. So they don't create desires. They don't create fears. They don't create someone's faith. They just bounce it back at them. So that's why there's like, because it's like, oh, like me looking at Aminadel, it makes me feel close. It's like, I feel like I'm loved and embraced and closer to God. It's like, because your love of God is bouncing off of me. So when Lucifer is like, what is it you desire? Your desires bounce off of him and you're kind of staring back at them. Same thing with Michael. His Your fears bounce off of him and you're having to stare them in the face. So I think that's so interesting that their power is kind of represented like, a, you know, that's an, they've never really dived into like their powers being that, um, a mirror. And I thought that was so fascinating kind of under explaining all that. That actually led to some interesting stuff because like because of that whole situation, um, Aminadel kind of points out to Chloe like Lucifer's situation is like because obviously you because you know Chloe kept feeling like you know much like Lucifer did like oh like everything between us isn't real is it like it was all you know something created by your dad and stuff like that like I never had any choices in my own life like I said I'm surprised Lucifer couldn't really understand like you've been in that situation you felt that but obviously it's like even though he's felt that because he learns from Michael that Michael's kind of like oh I basically whispering in your ears I'm you know it's so interesting because he's supposed to be the you know Lucifer's the serpent that whispered in the Eve's ear and everything, right? You know, that's the whole thing. So it's interesting to learn that your brother was kind of equivalent, the equivalent to your, you know, serpent. Like he was whispering in your ears. He's like, oh, basically I nudged you. You did the work yourself. The rebellion, leaving hell. Like, do you really think that was 100% you? So making him think like, oh, everything he's ever done is kind of been, all. but then, so there's a similarity, but at the same time, it's like, your entire life wasn't created for the purpose of being something for someone else. She, because she felt more like a tool, an object, but like, you know, that she is a gift, you know. But Aminadel made her realize, like, you are literally the only person that Lucifer's mojo won't work on. You're the only human because you are the only person that can see Lucifer for who he is. Because for any other human being, when he's with them, like, their desires bounce off of him 
you know, so their desires are kind of, so no one ever sees Lucifer for himself. All they see is kind of their desires and their wants. But Chloe, that spell doesn't, it's broken. She sees Lucifer for who she is. And that's apparent over the course of the series because despite everything, despite him being the devil, she still sees him and knows that he is the good man that he is. Like he might have his issues, but he tries to be a good person. So she, you know, so it makes her go like, so if that's the case, like, you know, I can see Lucifer for, you know, it's like, you're not the gift, Chloe, that is, because there's at least, because that means there's one person out there in the world who sees Lucifer for himself, who he is, who does the, who isn't caught up by the mojo, who's able to kind of see him, because even being like, she, even theorizing that that's why Lucifer is vulnerable around her, because he chooses to be, because she's the one person he wants to kind of bear it all too and that shows that like that means he ha doesn't have that connection with any other human being because that's even shown in the fact is because it's like obviously she's meant to be that polar opposite of lucifer but obviously the rules don't apply even though they're twins it doesn't apply to michael because michael's not vulnerable around her because it's not that chloe makes him vulnerable he subconsciously chooses to be vulnerable because it's like it's a metaphor for him literally letting down his guard and wanting to be bare his his heart and his soul to her type of thing and it's like which actually makes it even more beautiful and adorable and because once again my thought has always been it's never been a thing that god created lucifer like created chloe because like oh i put you on this path it's like no like it's them them being where they are i don't think even god planned for that it's like i didn't expect you two to fall in love like i figured you might be able to help my son along you falling in love with just icing on the cake you guys found that path on your own like my son found love like yes he's been in these like relationships that never mattered he'd hooked up with humans sure but this is the first time he's ever been in love you know i mean that was also the thing too that you know because it's like because, you know, later on, Maze has a whole thing about, like, I don't have a soul and everything. But, like, Aminadel was like, who's to say you can't? Like, I mean, I'm an angel who had a son with a human. The devil fell in love. So, like, crazy shit's going down. Like, who's to say, like, a demon can never get a soul type of situation? So, you know, I, you know it's like, you know, things aren't, you know, there's not, like, the structure to what you think it all is, you know? And so I just thought that was, like, a beautiful insight to the whole thing. Like, you know... That, you know, like I said, because Lucifer just kind of felt like, oh, dad's mini because that was, you know, because that was even a thing like Aminadel was like, I can't tell you why dad made ha put me in a position to help make you because even her, I love when Chloe learns she's like, wait, you made me. She's like, so does that mean I have like superpowers or something? And it's like, oh, no, I'm just a gift for Lucifer. That's all it is. She's even like, so Aminadel, does that mean you're you're my father and it's just kind of like what no 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 your dad and your mom are your dad and mom but the fact of the matter is i just basically kind of thing i just you know gave a helping hand but it's not like i supplied the helping hand you know uh it's it's interesting that that conversation going down to that route um i just thought that was fascinating another you know um kind of circling off a of, well trailing off a little bit i also thought it was interesting what they did with ella this season like she kind of has it like they've leaned into the fact that she's kind of like she's got this you know she's like oh she's a good person and everything uh but she kind of has a thing for bad boys like she hooked up with home dude and even maze had ner noticed it at first step like that time during the case she was like during the whole lee case she was like oh you want to you yeah like you want to jump on that she's like no 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 i know he's like a bad guy but we know that like she hooks up with him later on i even love later on it's like She's like, wait, I, I noticed it. And then, like, Ella was like, wait, you know Doug? She's like, no, I don't. And she's muttering to herself. So like, no, why would, almost like, why, under her breath, like, why would you think I don't know Doug's penis or something like that? Uh, but regardless. Um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, I just thought that was such an interesting aspect to her. Obviously, where that storyline goes is crazy. Because, you know, obviously... I won't lie to you, just something about Pete rubbed me the wrong way. It just seemed a little, especially because he started pushing, especially later on, he's like, oh yeah, here's a key and everything. I'm like, you're moving this relationship to Sam so damn fast. It just, him showing up at the crime scenes and stuff like that, I was like, are you, are you the actual killer? Like, I really started thinking that, like, it It wasn't long before it got revealed that I was starting to think that because it's like, he's, he's like, oh yeah, my boss, they love what I did about the whisper killer, so they want me here. I'm like, that's suspicious. I'm like, are you a killer returning to the scene of the crime type of situation? So it's kind of sad. I mean, because in Ella, she thought like, oh man, I found someone who I could really connect with. He's into Star Trek too. You know, it's Klingon. They had like their nerdy moment and everything like that. And it's like, oh, you know, it's like they connected. 
good. It was sweet, especially because that relationship actually helped Lucifer deal with some stuff in his own right. So what's interesting in the grand scheme of things is like, oh, you know, and it turns out like obviously he was faking it because he's so messed up on the inside like that he was like, oh, like he thought being with Ella would make him feel something for the first time, but it didn't. He's like, because the reason why he do, does all this is because his mom, you know, she screamed at him and she's, Ella's like, wait, you are mad because you're killing all these women because your mommy screamed at you? He's like, no, it's because she didn't love me. So he kind of almost looks at all these women as kind of harlots in some shape or form, like, but for him, it's like only time he feels anything is when he kills them. So obviously, like every serial killer kind of has like their like psychology behind like why they do what they do. And it turns out the dude who's trying to be the whisper killer, he's just because Chloe was like something about this case is off. But then it's like, oh, like he's t he's claiming responsibility for cases he had nothing to do with. I just thought that was interesting in the grand scheme of things, but that sucked. But he also th brought up something I thought was interesting. He was like, there's a darkness in you, Ella. That's why I saw, I see it in you. And I'm not too surprised because remember what Ella talked about? Like, because you know, there's a whole conversation about, you know, because she has a conversation with Chloe because Chloe's like, do you think things are predestined? And I obviously... Ella doesn't believe they are because it's like, look at my family. Her family, her siblings, obviously, they're good, they've got their criminal history and stuff like that. But for her, it's like, oh, I work in law enforcement and stuff like that. She made sure to kind of go down the right path, kind of like, oh, I'm going to choose my own life. But because of all that, there is a little bit of, you know, darkness in her, maybe. And so I'm curious to see what that kind of means. I mean, what kind of effect this whole thing with Pete's going to have on her going forward, you know? Um in the grand scheme of things, like what that's going to mean for her, um, storyline wise, you know, I mean, maybe you can make the argument. That's why like Maze, well, cause Maze wanted to be around her because it's like, oh, you have like this energy, this positivity. Maybe the argument could be that could be Ella overcompensating because she knows that, yeah, maybe there is some darkness in her, but I don't think anyone else sees that. I mean, and even if there is, there's darkness in everyone, like everyone has their own issues, but I think maybe it runs a little deeper in Ella than she might realize that maybe it's a thing of like, Maybe there's something in her family where it's like maybe my upbringing, me trying to overcompensate by trying to go. I mean, maybe she kind of has some secrets that we just don't know about. Because obviously, like, the ser series has kind of delved into at least the situation of two of her brothers, you know. So, and they've kind of had shady stuff. We know that. So, who knows? Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's interesting because, you know, the whole thing about secrets and stuff like that. Because we lean, uh, lean, uh, lean into, like, the whole thing with... Linda, like Michael surfaced the fact is of something that, you know, a dark secret about, you know, Linda, her fears of being a terrible mom stem from she gave up her original daughter for, um, like she didn't even give her up for adoption. She just left her at the hospital. So, and obviously how that ties into May's story because May's, all her issues are about abandonment. She has abandonment issues because she felt like she was left by Lucifer. She was left by Chloe. She was left by Eve, but the person that left her most her mom, which we got backstory in that in that um, that black and white episode, because I I'd heard about that because I I know Trisha Helfler had talked about that and some stuff about that episode because it's like oh were you back as like Charlotte or the goddess she was like no it's just kind of like a like you know different characters from the show playing you know people in that um, I even love Trixie being like whoa 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 you know guy you know women can be detectives too because my mom solves crimes and. Lucifer's like fine so he turns Jack into Chloe for the story um, and then even like the mobster that's involved in this it's Ella and she's wearing like this mustache and stuff like that and it's like and even Tristan's like whoa whoa I thought you said his name was Mr. like as in a man it's like you wanted me to make this story very like uh, gender like equal essentially and and Trix was like all right go ahead and I even love that one point it's it's actually kind of scary yet kind of adorable seeing Amy and um Garcia like you know being like that trying to like talking like kind of got that mobster voice and then like they're laughing at one point in time they're like ha 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 and she waves her hands and be like and silence stop laughing all right let's go boys trying to be all threatening it's just it's actually super adorable seeing her play that role um I don't think I've ever seen her play a role like that where she's been like a you know a bad person? I don't think I've ever seen that. I mean, I'm not that fully familiar with her filmography, but obviously from, like, Dexter to uh, the George Lopez shows, those are the things I kind of know her best from, so I'm like... I don't know, it was, it was just kind of interesting. I mean, and obviously this, but... That in itself ended up being an interesting story because it's like, oh, and it 
it obviously I like how there's parallels to obviously what's going on right now because obviously Lucifer's like the devil working as a cop like that's just the worst idea ever obviously it's you know and I like how this season they also fiddled with the title cards because they made that one black and white I still need to circle back and talk about Lieutenant Diablo like we need to talk about that I love that uh but let's lean into this first the fact of the matter is um with that whole situation of um that case, obviously, it's like, oh, you're working with a tech with a well, you're a PI, but that was way before you ended up working with Chloe, way, way beforehand. But obviously, this deals with uh, Maze's mom, Lilith, you know, Lily Rose. Um, obviously, she has a ring that's interesting. It's like this ring is um, a wedding, it was her, it's a reminder of who she was. Like, this is like everything she went through being married to Adam, and like, it's just not what she wanted, you know. And she keeps it as a reminder of who she was and what she's been through to lead her to be who she is now. Because apparently the ring has a little bit of the garden. Like it was like uh, it was a piece of the garden she took in with her with the ring. And so it's interesting because obviously you got Linda well, Rachel Harris playing like, you know, a um a bartender and stuff like that. I figured it was her behind a lot of this because it's like she talked about her husband, the condition he's in. Because whoever took the ring was trying to get the... Because they were under the impression that the ring gave immortality. So the moment that came up as a storyline beat, I was like, it's obviously got to be the bartender. She's behind this. But it turns out it's like... It was like there were so many moving pieces because I even love like um, Lucifer uh, meeting Willie. Um, and obviously he's played by... Um, Kevin Alejandro, because obviously, you know, it's, it's Dan, uh, but uh, I love the fact is that he's like, I'm trying to, like, Lucifer's like, I'm trying to find a word for you, and he couldn't find it, he's like, there's gotta be a word for it, he's like, I'll think of it later, and it's like, okay, leaning into, like, how you always refer to Dan as a douche, so I love that, and when you, Willie is obviously very douchey-like, um, but it turns out later on, it's like the mobster ended up getting killed as well, so it's interesting, it makes you wonder, is this the precursor to maybe Lucifer leaning into, like, hey, you know, obviously it's that thing of like, it's one of those storyline things of like, this is retroactive canon in a sense that like, this is canon that exists now because we've retroactively made it canon because it's like, this storyline took place. I mean, obviously we know that Lucifer's been to Earth multiple times over the eons, obviously, and stuff like that. But regardless, over the years, Archer, rather than, but regardless, um, the point I was making is like, how that case ended up developing where it's like so many moving pieces like uh, the bartender she had uh, Larry steal it Larry rather than giving it to her uh, ended up giving it to the mobster dude because but the mobster dude killed him because of like you stole this from my lady he wanted to give her back to her to be like oh my god look I got your rain back oh because he was super in love with her but then he ends up getting ritually killed by Willie because he wanted like the almighty power that he was going to get from it but because once again he was under the impression the ring gave you power and I love Lucifer I was like all right you really think this is immortality he pulls out the gun and shoots him in the foot which is like very reminiscent of the fact that the matter is Chloe does a very similar thing to him and everything uh so it's just it's interesting how that all i mean that's the whole point for it to all kind of seem surfical like oh like it's interesting and ironic that history comes back in the same regard to kind of bite you in the ass you know you know at the beginning of the series with that but um nevertheless you know and at the end of the day lily decided not to go down the route of um pressing charges against the bar like letting her go because it's like letting her spill it spend as much time with her husband as she can because like obviously like he might not make it and she doesn't want to take any more time away from them like, like basically let's put it all on willie because he is the one that's in direct correlation to like you know all this kind of going down so let it all kind of fall on him uh, but we did get some insight from Lily about everything. Like, she's like, I left all my... Because Lucifer was like, is that, you know, leaving all your children in hell? And she was like, I did that because I gave you an army. He's like, I, you, I didn't ever ask for that army. It wasn't an army I knew I needed. But he's like, I'm thankful for that. But because of that, you know, I will always owe you a debt. So that's why he's doing this for her. Because he owes her. Because, because she gave him the army necessary for his rebellion. Um... But Lily kind of start thinking over, like, because as over the course of things, because she saw like the human interaction, like that love, that complicatedness of it. She's like, "Do you think, you know, would you ever fall for a human?" And then Lucifer's like, "What? You crazy?" And it's like, huh, I, ironically, uh, it took a couple couple decades, but he eventually got there. Um, 
because she was looking at the human life, like the love and connection. Like when you live so long, you never really take, once again, it's that thing that Aminadol kind of had to learn too, to kind of separate himself from being a celestial and separating himself from humanity and kind of embracing them. Lily was kind of finding that in herself as well. So at the end of it all, she gives away her immortality. She blows it into the ring and she gives it to Lucifer, like, which, you know, so that ring, I mean, includes her immortality so it's like now if someone was to wear that ring they would get immortality wouldn't they maybe maybe i don't know it is interesting in the grand scheme of things i like how the twist to that story too ended up being like trixie was like working for maze the entire time it's like oh trixie was pumping her for pumping him for information about her uh mom and i just thought that was kind of you know interesting in the grand scheme of things um but the, the really sweet thing, too, and I, I was so happy to see Trisha help I was like, ah! It just kind of, I was like, oh I, wish you were, oh, I wish you were still here, either as Charlotte or the goddess. I wish we could see more of you. That would be so dope, but, you know, obviously. Um, but the fact of the matter is, like, that storyline was interesting because Jack had his own issues. Because he found out that him and his wife, they got together because she was a lady of the night. And someone had hired her to make moves on Jack, and that's why. And and they built a life together, but it's like our entire relationship was based on a lie. Which Lucifer was like, "Really? That's such a boring thing. Just get over it." And Jack was like, "Just get over it." So obviously the parallels, and I don't think Lucifer really realized it at the time, but obviously the parallels between what Jack and his wife are going through and what happened between Lucifer and um, between Lucifer and um, Chloe. But obviously, Trixie's like, so whatever happened to him? He's like, well, they moved to so-and-so. So he's like, things probably didn't work out. But Trixie's like, no, I think they talked on the bus ride. And she's like, I think they worked out. And I think that's when it hit Lucifer. We're like, yeah, you know, may maybe, you know, kind of making like, maybe if there was hope for Jack in them, maybe there was hope for him and Chloe. But uh, Maze uses this as an opportunity to track her mom down later on. And confronts her mom. Her mom's an old lady. There were voices, and I was stuck. At, I thought it was going to be this, but it turned out not to be the case. It seems like she's alone. She doesn't have anyone because it's like, whoa. She's like, oh, Mazikeen, wow. So for her mom, it's like life didn't work out the way I thought it would. But Mazikeen's like, well, but what about me? Why did you abandon us? Why did you abandon me? She's like, because I made you strong. Look at you. You didn't need anyone. And I think the sad thing is. Basically, Lilith was trying to make her kid strong. Like she, like parents mess up. They don't always go about it the right way. Because I mean, and that's a whole conversation that you know Dan had with Aminadel. Because Aminadel was like, "Oh, I want to make the world a safer place for my son." He's like, "I get it." Because obviously, that drug thing circling back to it. Because I completely forgot to finish that up. Was like, obviously, it ended up being a bust. It didn't end up being anything. It was just some kid stealing medication from his family, trying to sell it and stuff like that. He wasn't some big time drug dealer or had any connections. He was just some like some punk kid. But it's like, obviously, Aminadel just wanted to do everything he could to make the world a safer place for his son because everything that goes down, it's like, oh, I don't want my son to be kind of drawn in kind of the ugliness of this world. Obviously, that being, a, you know, a rip because that storyline from last season where he was helping that kid kind of get away from all that and that kid got framed and he ultimately ended up getting killed by the people he was selling drugs for initially, you know, that whole, you know, and what that storyline meant for Aminadel obviously even made him consider like, hey, I'm going to take my son to the Silver City. These humans... They're just, they're worse off. So he felt like, I can't grow my let my son grow up here. You know, obviously, that being the storyline at that time. But it's like, I think this is obviously a continuation of all of that. So my whole point was, like, parents kind of go about things the way they think is the best way. You know, and Dan suggested, just be there for your kid. Like, you know, you want to protect them, just be there for them. Uh, be there to protect them yourselves. And so... In her mind, Lily's like, I'm doing you a favor because I think Lily was like, I was in a position where I felt like I was kind of adherent to other people, like I needed other people. And it's like, I didn't want you guys to end up like that. But at the same time, it's like also like for Mazikeen, it's like you left us in hell. You made us these soulless demons, like the way you made us. like. And then at the same time, like because it seems like Maze is the only one who cares. Like it seems like whatever other siblings she has, they don't give a shit. But it's like and I think that speaks volumes because Maze does care. It shows that she is way more human than so many people give her credit for. Even Lucifer gives it. He's like, oh, you're a demon. It's like, no, she's much more than that. Much, and once again, that's the hypocrisy behind it, because it's like, 
You want people to look at you as more than just the devil. So why can't you look at Maze as more than just a demon? That's why I think there's there's got to be more to that story that we just don't know yet. That Lucifer really never had an opportunity to really go into it. But obviously for Maze, it's a thing of like, like mom, you, you're you're so blinded that you don't realize like how messed up you made me. But sadly, Maze never got an opportunity to confront her mom because her mom died a couple of days later. And so it's like... In the grand scheme of things, and because also, you know, that's probably also why she's pissed at Lucifer because it's like, you hid my mom from me and I never had a chance to deal with my family issue. I mean, because obviously Lucifer's constantly dealing with his to a certain extent. Obviously, it's led to him and Aminadel kind of bridging a lot of their differences, the, the gap between them. But it's like, obviously, he still has a lot of dad issues. So it's like, once again, it's interesting. So many people have, you know, having familial issues over the course of the show and everything. Um, but it's just, I think it's just, it's sad in the grand scheme of things because I think I get where Lily was coming from. Like in her, she wanted to make her children independent it's like you don't need anyone you don't have to be adherent to like rely on someone but also because you took that away from them you took away the ability for them to really connect with people like that connection so hard for me is because of the way you abandoned them it created abandonment issues in her but also you're making it harder for her to connect with other people like Lily did you know because once again Lily was I think you know she was forcing like I was kind of adherent to so many other people so I don't want you to be like that either she was taking her problems and forcing it kind of on her kids like she's like I wish someone had done this for me but it's like you kind of you messed your kids up you messed Maze up in a certain uh, regard I just I just thought that was just interesting what that storyline ended up being finally circling back to it I do like the um, Lieutenant Diablo storyline. I like that because apparently like, and it's like, oh, this was filmed on the WB lot and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay, that's fucking hilarious because it's like that obviously the whole episode was supposed to be super meta because obviously Chloe was still dealing with like a, her identity and stuff like that. But apparently this dude was like the showrunner of uh, Lieutenant Diablo and the fact of the matter is Lucifer's the one that talked to him years ago. Kind of all he did was give him like, because he talked to Lucifer a lot and he applied that to this story and stuff like that. It's like, oh, this show's a hit um it's interesting because they even make a reference of like oh yeah it's six seasons which is interesting because apparently the show might go for six seasons technically seven because obviously this season five is being split in part one and two like i said that's if you want to get technical about things uh but regardless it's just interesting like obviously it's like and like obviously the dude playing lieutenant diablo diablo making these devil puns and the chloe character being a stripper uh, and she's just kind of adding like this sex appeal to the show and it's like and Chloe's like wait is that supposed to be me you see the Dan of the show you meet the Linda of the show the maze of the show Her his name is Blaze and everything and then him and which I'm surprised Linda is okay with that like you know the fact of the matter is Blaze and her character hooking up like it's still gotta be weird you're sitting right beside Maze during this whole thing but I, I love that because even Maze being like wow they, they nailed me she's what she sees on screen she's like oh my god that it's me, you know, so I, lo I love, I thought that was just, I love how that, epi obviously what that meant for the overarching story of Chloe having, it's literally being faced with like, oh, like, you know, because like the person who's playing like the show equivalent of her, it's like, don't you kind of have an issue with the fact that the matter is your character just kind of gets dealt, kind of just like, oh, kind of just like oh you're 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 the sex icon and stuff like that which i'm sure also kind of hits chloe a little close to home because obviously like the movie that lucifer kind of knew her from it kind of comes up in that same episode too like that whole thing like it's not the same thing but it's it, it probably still hits home a little harder because of like chloe's past like you know filming stuff like you know regardless um it was actually kind of sad because Diablo ends up getting killed. Because uh, I love him being like, oh yeah, they're looking for, like, they're yearning. What's another word for it? And Lucifer's almost like, yearning? Can't you find a better word? It's like, I think the word you're looking for is desire. But it's like, I think that was just like the whole point. Like, Diablo's all about yearning. And even at that moment when they went to that uh, showrunner's like hotel room or whatever, like him and Lucifer are doing the exact same thing. And they look at each other and it's like, they're so like carbon copy of each other. I thought it was interesting. Showing that he's very in tune with Lucifer. Even Lucifer really like and you're like oh this guy's nailing it you know um but it, it's sad because his co-star ended up being the one responsible because for her she didn't want to be a part of something that was so like 
my role is just this. It's like, I don't want to be, yeah, the show's successful, but I don't want to be stuck on a show like this for like six seasons. It's like, I want something with a little more depth to it and stuff like that. So it's interesting that that's what this was kind of all about. And she was framing Diablo. She was like, honestly, he's kind of like, kind of a lovable guy or whatever but the fact of the matter is that idiot actually ended up being the one to solve the whole thing so yes i was going to frame him but then i had to kill him because he figured it out which is like wow you know he seemed like an idiot but he was actually really good he figured out my yearning you know that i wanted more you know so i thought that was just kind of an interesting like how that whole you know the correlation of that whole case i should also circle back around and talk about dan this season dan is on a obviously like he's coming back from being the massive downer situation he was in last season where um he was um obviously dealing with the whole charlotte thing and obviously like he's trying to be a lot more positive he's going through a lot of the books that linda gave him so he's trying to like be all positive and take a lot of the negative out there obviously like him and i even love that whole pudding thing where it's like oh like Chloe handed uh, Lucifer the pudding and be like, go ahead, eat this. He's like, this isn't mine. And Dan's like, well, what do you do with my pudding? He's like, here you go, Dan. He's like, what'd you do with it? You, you, you mess with it? He's like, no. And Dan licks it a little bit. He was like, you spit in it, didn't you? He spit in it, didn't you? I bet you he spit in it. And he walks away and he's like, the sad thing that you think so little of him is so good because you know Lucifer would do some childish shit like that. Uh, but I love it. But like Dan and Michael kind of hit it off a little bit. But then when Lucifer came back and Dan's trying to be like, hey, buddy, I made you this. He's like, why the hell would I want that, Dan? Ew, gross. Get away from me. Um, but I thought it was neat that him and Dan had that moment of like, you know, because Lucifer was working with Aminadel. I mean, uh, Chloe was working with Aminadel, so he was stuck working with Dan, working the other side of the case. And interestingly enough, it's like, oh, yeah, like I'm talking to this lady because of something that went down in the transcript. And Dan was like, wait. You read the transcript? He was like, yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Like, working with Dan actually rubbed off on Because, like, obviously they were doing a lot of, like, the um, the uh, back. Like, it's like, oh, all the stuff that, you know, even in cop shows, like, all the heavy lifting investigation lines. Like, oh, yeah, and to follow all these leads things. Because, obviously, police shows always show you, like, boom, boom, boom things. Like, obviously, like, a lot of time in, over the course of a case gets cut out. Like, a lot of the paperwork, a lot of the research. Like, obviously, a lot of shows, because obviously it's, like, an hour time frame, depending on the show. They kind of, like, make it seem like it's boom, 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 when in actuality it's not. But um, it was just interesting, like, you know, because I, and I, it was an interesting thing, because, like, Dan was being very positive and stuff like that. And Luc he was telling Lucifer he had to. He was in a very bad place because of what happened with Charlotte. And this, he's like, yeah, it might be all BS, but it makes me feel better. It gives me kind of purpose again. And I think for Lucifer, he kind of resonated with that. He's like, fine. And he puts the thing on to make uh, Dan feel better about it. But it's like, like I said, like they bonded over the case. And it's just like the way Lucifer just kind of handled himself in that case was kind of interesting. Kind of, it's interesting too, because at the end of the day, because even like uh, during the Whisper Killer case, uh, you know, you had um, you had Ella being like, "Wait, Lucifer, you did this?" He's like, "She's like, oh, who who did all this for you?" He was like, "No, I did it." And she's like, "Cause he kind of basically put." Uh, worked out the crime scene and like the uh, he was like alright because Aminadel was like you've worked with Chloe so long be like Chloe be the detective in this case and so he applied everything he learned from her and was working a case and Ella was like oh shit look at you Lucifer it was pretty dope because it's like yeah you've been working by Chloe's side for years of course you're going to pick up some stuff so he became like in that moment he became uh, you know the detective and he worked it like a cop I was like that's so interesting and I loved how that ended up uh, working out like that but it's just I just thought that was fascinating uh circling back um i like what they did this season because i think they did it back in season three yeah it was season three i believe there was the episode where basically the same night you had the guys night out type of situ episode and then like the next episode was like the girls out episode the ladies are out episode because that entire episode was the one that dealt with chloe's ex jed which is interesting because like chloe and lucifer just kissed so it's like hey uh we got interrupted but uh let's get back to it because like even uh you know um even, um, God, Ella was kind of like, Decker, you didn't have to answer your phone. Could have got down to business. You know, we want this. And basically, I want this to happen for you. Um, and obviously, like, the sexual tensions there and stuff like that. And even, like, this moment of, like, Lucifer and, like, Chloe just kind of giggling to themselves about, like, like the sexual innuendos and stuff like that. It's happening. And it's just kind of, like, almost like, let's go back to my play. I even love later on Ella point something out. She was like... I get, no, it was Linda that was like, I get it, like, he's been with all, no, it, it was Ella who pointed out, like, yeah, I get it, like, 
Lucifer has a lot of experience with a lot of people, so you might feel like you might not be up to it. And Chloe's like, honestly, I hadn't thought about that because it's like, oh yeah, because she's like, oh, Lucifer's got to be people within the thousands, and it's like, oh, that, that would probably make you a little less reluctant to have sex with someone because like this person's had sex with so many people, men and women, and it's like they've had so many experiences. Let's not forget the orgies he was having last season with Eve. So it's like a lot of that's probably resonating in your head of like, oh. Obviously, it's going to lead to like you almost being like, oh, do I stack up type of situation? But like the whole point was I like how that episode was like those episodes from season three. And just like you got the two perspectives. You got like all the guys, including Jed, because obviously Lucifer's got it in his jealous phase because for him, he was just kind of scared. You know, he didn't want to admit it, but it was just a thing of like he was scared that like, you know, Jed was back in Chloe's life. This is her ex. And even Dan being like, man, I always felt like he just always had a torch for because obviously it made Lucifer go like he never felt because Lucifer's like, oh, I've never had I've never felt threatened by you, Dan. And you had a kid with her. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, it's like she was always like, I mean, especially because Lucifer dealt with his first love last season, which in actuality, he made the whole point of like you. Eve was never my first love. You were, Chloe. It, it was always you, you know? Um, so, technically, Chloe's his first love. So, it's a thing of, you know, it's like, oh, my first love is with her first love. And he's constantly trying to hit on her and obviously trying to make a point. Obviously, he's never let you go because even the little foundation thing he was working on or whatever, he named it after her, like the nickname he had given her. Um... But the fact of the matter is Lucifer was trying to act like he's not being bothered by it. So later on when he's talking to Jed about like how he should handle it, like, oh, you want to keep a little mystery in the relationship. So Lucifer does the idiotic thing and he's like, oh, um, oh, Chloe, like I'm going to ignore your calls because I want her to think like, oh, I, I don't want to be something she can immediately solve. Like obviously he went about it the wrong way. But I love like their side of things is like while the girls are like the lady, I said girls, ladies are, you know, um, partying it up, obviously part of a sting. Um, the whole the fact of the matter is it's almost like th isn't a movie called Three Men and a Baby I, I'm, I'm sure I'm getting that wrong it's almost like that because like Dan, Lucifer, Aminadel Jed for a little bit are there helping deal with the baby situation and they're trying to get the baby down and everything and it's it's interesting the only thing that comes Charlie down is Lucifer's devil face uh, and I love that this is the only time we've seen Luke. I mean, initially he gets pissed off because he thinks Jed manipulated him. It's like it's bad enough being manipulated by dad, but being manipulated by dad. So that, and then he flares up, but then like baby Charlie calms down. It's like, I love this is the only time he does his devil's face in this part of the season. So it's just interesting. Uh, that's and, that, and that's also the circumstances why he devil faces up again later in the episode is just to make... Um, baby Charlie uh, feel better. And I love how that ultimately ends up with Dan, um, with Dan finding out about Lucifer. I was like, oh shit, these are gonna be the circumstances you found out about it, especially because they had like a heart to heart and everything, you know, obviously where him and Lucifer are better off this season, but then he sees Lucifer who he really is. Obviously the whole point was Michael created those circumstances. And obviously later on, Michael's like, oh, I'm the Archangel Michael and Lucifer, I'm here for you, blah, 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 blah. Because it clicked in Dan's head like, holy shit, everything they've ever said, you know, the fact of the matter is now it made him go like, I'm in Adele saying that you were in heaven, now it makes sense lucifer actually is the devil and stuff like that you know i mean and, and even lucifer brings it up later on he's like i literally never lied to you i told you from the beginning i was the damn devil just none of you believe me once again lucifer never lies that's also the thing of like you never want that ends up being a complicated thing for chloe later on because she doesn't want him to tell because she's like if I ask him how he really feels about me, he won't be able to lie. So he'll tell the truth, and I'll I'll find out that he doesn't care about me the way I the way I feel about him. Because she said I love you. He never said I love you too. You know, it's actually kind of interesting. Like it kind of a little tangent here. It just reminds me of you know I always do this just because I always think it's kind of funny to kind of uh, reminisce. It's kind of probably weird because I always bring it up, but it's just always interesting how your own past could always kind of come back up. I was in a situation where I actually was a person who said I love you first in a relationship, but I said I love you too because I think I was a teenager, me and my girlfriend at the time, we were saying the whole like, oh, I love you thing. It was disgusting, ill, gross, like kind of like like that cutesy wootsy type of shit. It's just, it's in retrospect, it's like, oh, I don't know why. We, but she said I love you. I thought she said I love you. So apparently, and I didn't really remember this until she said it, but it was like, oh, I said, I love you too. She's like, so technically I said I love you first because I misunderstood the situation. I mean, granted, I did love her or whatever, but still it was just, it was just, it, it made me kind of think about that for a little bit. 
what what also was crossing my mind is now that means Ella is literally the only one who doesn't know about Lucifer. I'm going to there's a ton of other people who don't know, but amongst the core group, Ella's the only one who doesn't know at this point in time. And I'm curious in the grand scheme of things, like how Ella is going to react when she finds out the truth. Like I mean, maybe like that whole thing Pete brought up about her having darkness in her, maybe that's going to correlate because obviously Ella's been religious. Obviously, she's always been religious, but obviously she had her issues because of you know everything that went down with Charlotte. And Pierce Kane, um, because of all that, so that led to everything, you know. So obviously, last season she had a lot of issues with the big guy, but she found her religion again, you know, at the end of it all. So I'm curious, like I think because of everything, I think she might be the person who ends up taking the reveal the best. Like obviously, it's like oh, you're joking, you're into in character and stuff like that. It's like no, 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 no. When it's all said and done, I think she still will take it better just because of her religious position. Because I think even like religiously, she looks at Lucifer as like Lucifer was an angel first, and getting having gotten to know Lucifer, I think for her it's like you're not all that bad. Plus, I want to hear that conversation where Lucifer's like, all right, you remember that person you saw, you, you know, you thought you saw ghosts and the person that was basically like your ghost best friend that you thought, oh, maybe I'm crazy because I'm seeing a ghost. Maybe it's just something wrong with me. Yeah, that was actually one of my sisters. That was Azrael. You know, I want that to kind of come back around because it's like, oh, yeah, because she still doesn't know that that like, oh, your ghost friend was actually an angel kicking it with you the entire time. Um, regardless of all that, like I, I, that's kind of where my uh, mind went with that. I also really like the episode where Chloe, because it was literally the next episode after they banged, and it's like Chloe took his mojo and was like, whoa, that was crazy. Because like, because even he started getting concerned. He's like, what if, he's like, all oh, the thousands of people I've slept with, what if they have my mojo too? And so Linda's like, oh, you think I got it? She's like, let me try it out. And it's like, oh, sadly, she doesn't have it. So it's like, it's just a detective, you know. Um, and we still haven't really gone to the ins and outs about why that happened, but it's also, it circles back to what happened before. Anytime anything's happened between Lucifer and Chloe, it's because Lucifer wants it. Like, obviously it's all, a, like, it's all a manifestation of his feelings. Like, once again, he hates himself last season, so his, his, his devil form started showing through because, you know, that's kind of, he kept seeing himself as the monster, as the devil, like, the evil person, like, this thing that ruins stuff. Because of that, that's why he started looking like that because it's a it's a physical manifestation of his internal struggles so i think once again the way they justify it is because he let down his guard because he was vulnerable around chloe that allowed that situation to happen that maybe on some level he wanted to give her the power in the situation but now she was able to start mojoing people but then later on in the episode it's like wait it doesn't work but then it's like, wait, did I get my mojo back? But then she she's able to mojo. So it seems specifically like for a little bit she was able to mojo other people. But the moment Lucifer starts feeling conflicted about it, it stops working on other people. But I think it still worked on him. So he didn't get his mojo back. But at one point she technically didn't have it. Either. So it was a whole, that whole thing being a complicated thing. I even love him trying to be okay with, he's like, oh, you know, test out our mojo. And she's like. Oh, you said our mojo, you know, and him go carrying around the gun and badge. But obviously visiting Linda, Linda ended up being more on Lucifer's side because like, Chloe, what if someone took your gun and badge? Understanding like, obviously that's very important to you. So that's the same thing for Lucifer, like having his mojo taken, you know, because um, obviously it was a very interesting circumstance of like, you know, we're, once again, we're in unknown territory because once again, look at everything else that's kind of happened around them. Uh, so it's it's a special case that no one else can really understand because their situation is uniquely well them. But um, I forgot what was necessary. I'm trying to remember what that case in particular entailed. Right, because that was the the beginning of the Whisper Killer. That was the beginning of that case, and obviously it's like a killer who kind of made people feel powerless. Like he sedated them and then like cut their like vocal cords and stuff like that, and they kind of drowned in their own blood. Set. Like that ended up being the whole. I remember that's actually the first part of that case and everything. Um, but obviously, like the guy behind it and everything ended up being that guy in particular to capture. Obviously, like I was playing earlier, ended up being a copycat and everything. So it was just an interesting because I. I think they've dealt with serial killers over the course of a ser this series before. They probably haven't. I'm just rem misremembering because I haven't seen season one, two, and three. Like, I've only seen them all once. Obviously, I rewatched season four in preparation for season five, part one. But it's like, so I don't remember. They probably have crossed paths with serial killers. But typically, more often than not, they deal with just one-offs. They don't typically deal with serial killers too much. But obviously, Pete ended up being a serial killer. Um, 
But regardless, at the end of it all, like, obviously, like, Dan showed up. He shoots Lucifer because he knows the truth about Lucifer. Because it's like, how can you be with him knowing what he is? Luckily, Lucifer didn't die because he's, invul he's vul invulnerable again. But then, obviously, that causes issues for Chloe because it's like, wait, if you're invulnerable again, what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? Especially because, like, Lucifer was so, he's like, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm not going to hurt Dan, but I'm going to put him in a position where he won't die, but he'll get super mad. Like, I even love at one point he was ignoring Chloe because he was so busy kind of concocting a plan to get revenge. He literally had, like, two whiteboard full of ideas. He's like, this is it. This is my grand plan of getting revenge against Dan. You know, I love that whole thing. But obviously, Chloe ended up getting kidnapped, and that's what set Lucifer off. Like, he was like, I should have been there, and even you know, elegant pissed. I was like, yeah, you should have been there. Why weren't you there? He's like, no, we need to, we need to focus Miss Lopez, Lopez. And she's like, you're right. You're right. But still he did feel guilty. He's like, because I was so caught up in my own BS. I wasn't there for the detective. I wasn't there for Chloe when she needed me. And now she's in the hands of some serial killer. And it scared him. Cause it's like, they found a body they thought was going to be hers, but it turned out not to be Chloe's. But then like they caught Pete, but Pete was like, Oh, I don't know where she is. Pete wasn't the one that took her. The moment she got taken, I thought it was going to, I had a feeling it was connected to Michael, but I thought maybe the serial Serial killer was working with Michael type of situation it turned out obviously not being the case but um I even loved Ella saying like Pete you're gonna burn in hell which is like obviously the devil's right across the way so even he's like yeah yeah I can't wait for you to go to hell oh you're gonna get tortured my friend well the sad thing is let's not forget hell is about your guilt if he doesn't feel anything maybe he doesn't feel guilt I mean to be fair Cain tried to say like oh I'm not gonna feel he's like oh I'm not going to hell I'm gonna go to heaven and everything and it's like no you're going to hell after everything you've done because you might want to make it seem like you don't feel guilty like hell it's all about your own guilt you believe you deserve to go to hell he'll say like oh I, I'm gonna go to it's like no you feel like you deserve to go to hell so you're gonna go to hell rightfully where you belong so Pete not who knows what's gonna happen with Pete like maybe his circumstances are because I don't feel anything because I don't feel remorse because I don't feel guilt maybe he won't or maybe he will because of the whole Ella thing and that might be his help for all we know regardless um luckily they were able to track her down because obviously uh they had to bring in Dan and Lucifer had to tell Dan like hey all right this is what it is type of situation um explaining everything like Chloe's in danger he's like you should have led with that it's like all right you were with Michael it's like well Michael flew me there but I passed out He's like, man, it's flying. You know I have my thing with heights. And he's just like, could you, n the one time I need you not to be completely useless, here you are being useless. But it ended up being a cave, so they ended up finding out exactly where they needed to uh, be. And obviously for Dan, he sees it firsthand. He's like, wow, Lucifer really does care about Chloe. At the same time, there's the whole Aminadel situation because he's worried, oh, my son has a cold. Maybe this means, speaks, maybe it means something. Linda doesn't think too much of it, but Aminadel's like, the fact is my son got sick means he's not an angel. Even when time froze, it's like he got completely frozen. We celestials are the only ones moving, meaning my son's 100% mortal because Aminadel didn't have any angel juice pumping necessarily at the time him and Linda hooked up. So he was as much mortal as anything. So, of course, none of his angelicness passed on to um, Charlie. Now, obviously that's going to make you feel a certain way because that means my son can get sick, he can grow old, and he can die. Because obviously for Charlie, it's a whole thing because obviously like for Aminadel, the whole worry was like, obviously he's like, oh, I'm going to be there. Like, because obviously he couldn't, he really didn't know what else to do with his life because even he was like, before Charlie, what did I really do with my life? Because when you actually think about what Aminadel was did, doing, he was just out and about kind of helping everyone else, kind of being there when other people needed him. But he didn't really have like, Maze was able to kind of find her own life. Obviously, she still has a lot of issues kind of pulling her back. But Aminadel doesn't really have much of a life outside of Linda and uh, Charlie, you know? Which we've never solidified where they stand. I, I know they're just probably they're, they're just co-parenting, so it's not like we're together. So I even love the whole thing where it's just like, oh, yeah, like, Maze, uh, kiss me, and then try to have sex with me. And Linda was like, wait, what? So that part of me wonders, like, and she didn't seem like she necessarily had an issue with it, but she was just kind of like, no, like, she just, I'm thinking, you know, you know, May, she just wanted to fight, and Linda was like, no, I'm pretty sure she, also the other F word, but I'm wondering, is it, is it, I mean, obviously, a, a Minadel and a Linda, obviously, there was something there already anyway, but still, like, I mean, much like there was Maze in him, but it's just kind of like, because Maze ended up figuring out, 
Like, you're the one person I broke things up with. Like, everyone else abandoned me. You're the one person who didn't. So she was trying to rekindle that flame a little bit for him. It's like, you didn't break up with me. You found your own path. And look how great that's worked out for you. Who you've become, the path you walked down. So you'll eventually find someone. Just give yourself time. The fact of the matter is, once again, nothing set in stone. Even the whole thing about you not having a soul and everything. So there's that. Um... But circling back to the point, obviously Aminadel's scared because it's like, now it's like, wait, your son can get sick. That means your son can die. That means he won't live forever. You have to watch your son grow old and die. So, I mean, they've already set it up where it's like, well, obviously people can get rid of their immortality because Aminadel, you know, obviously was mortal at one point in time. That was different circumstances. But um, obviously that ended up being a lesson he needed to go through. Like, obviously, once again, it's like, how much is God's interference? It's like, is God just putting certain things in their path, you know, because that's the whole thing. I'm like, oh, God only gives you so, he only gives you as much as you can handle. So he throws hurdles in your way so that you can, you know, bypass them and stuff like that. So that's what I'm wondering about. Like, is that what a Minadel situation is? You know, is that what, like, Lucifer and Chloe's thing is? Like, I, once again, I nudge you in this direction. You might hit some bumps on the wrong road, but it's like how you handle them yourself. I don't interfere. I'm not the one that has a grand plan. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. That's the big question in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but nevertheless, my, my, my point was, um, I'm, I'm curious, you know, What's that going to be in a, in a grand scheme of things with the whole, you know, Aminadel and Charlie situation? Because Linda's probably not going to think much of it. But obviously, it's like that's the, that's the whole thing about humans and stuff like that. Life is so short, so you have, but you know, but it's still hard to ask someone to watch their own child grow old and die. And, and, and especially being the overprotective parent that he is, like my kid could get sick and die. Like any little thing could get, like obviously he was already very overprotective because, but that's the thing, Michael pushes those fears of yours. He just, and like he just has them like bounce back at you. So, you know, these are fears that were already there, but obviously like Michael's using them to manipulate Aminadel to the point Aminadel was so scared, he ended up freezing time. Not just like slowing it down to make it seem like it's frozen. It's like, no, he fully 100% froze time. Everything and everyone at the same time, Lucifer's having that whole conversation with Chloe. It's like now that you're not now that you're invulnerable around me, maybe that means you no longer want to be vulnerable. Like it's like before we were taking steps to you opening up to me, but maybe now that scared you. So now because that's what I kind of took it as where he was like, I let my guard down the moment he said that did his guard went back up because he got scared because this is new territory for Lucifer now knowing like, holy crap. So now it's a situation like I am being vulnerable with you. I've never been like that with another person. And that's not always the easiest thing because I think I can correlate with that because I'm not really good at being vulnerable with people I think I can sympathize and try to empathize in certain regards but even when it comes to myself and just opening up to people ever since I've been young I've always had an issue with that connecting like getting close to people because I have I have my own fears much like loose I'm kind of in that vein of Lucifer and um in a sense that it's almost like you're afraid people won't like you when they kind of get to real know the real you. I think that's always been Lucifer's fear. Yes, he's always been honest and stuff like that. But even though you've always been honest about Chloe, you knew she never really believed you. And I think you were okay with that because you were scared if she ever did fully see your devil face that she wouldn't believe you. I mean, granted, there were times when he tried to show her and it didn't work. But that's because, obviously, at the time, he, once again, he was subconsciously scared of her ever seeing the real him. So, like like I said, I can kind of understand where, like, Lucifer comes from that situation. So, it's like now I'm in a position where, like, you understand you are being vulnerable with someone. It makes you a little scared because it makes it even more real. Because it's like, obviously, he cares deeply for Chloe. He does love Chloe. I think he's just scared to actually say it because it's like it makes it real and, like, you know, what that might mean for things, you know. Because uh, this is the first person he's ever been in love with, you know. It's scary, you know, when you've lived your entire life and this is your, once again, it's like you were my first love. Once again, everything with you and Eve, it, it never compared to what you had with Chloe, you know, so that's, it's a complicated thing. So in the, in the middle, he's about to say, I, but the fact is, I'm sure that's still kind of like you're hesitating, but obviously it's like, you know, he has to build up the courage to say it, but obviously they, everything goes down. Maze is working with Michael again because Michael is like, oh, I'll get what I want, but you'll also get what you want, a soul. It's like, because I'm the one person who's never, never lied to you. I've always told you the truth, Maze. And so that leads to a showdown with everybody, which was pretty badass. Obviously, Lucifer's not trying to hurt Maze in any shape or form, but it's like my mom and everything. And she's like, wait, you know, about, how do you know about that? And it's like, because you didn't even tell me. I had to find out on my own. Michael's the one that helped me. Like, obviously, like Aminadel and Michael are going at it it's like 
full on demon versus angel, well, devil, and then angel versus angel, brother versus brother, like, uh, you know, everything going down. And I, I really thought that was so badass how that looked when, like, Maze kicked Lucifer through the glass because time is frozen. The glass is broken, but it stays in position where it's flown to. And then, like, Maze kind of has to knock it out of her way, but it's still frozen. And I was like, that's so badass. Like, we're having this full on brawl. And then, obviously, there's, like, you know, Partway through the fight, like Michael's trying to hit a Minadel, and then Lucifer blocks the punch. I'm like, yo, having your brothers back in a fight like that, it's just like, it's like, yo, we having this like big out, dual, drag out brawl on a celestial level while all of humanity, at least within Los Angeles, is frozen. And it's like, all right, so that's where everything goes down. It's like, oh shit, we're about to go to it. I'm like, all right, here we go. And light shines through, and it's like, stop. And it's like, what? And it's it's their dad, played by uh, uh, is it David Haber? I always feel like I I always forget because I always, I try to remember is it David or Dennis? I feel like it's Dennis, but it is it is David, isn't it? I, it might be I can't remember. Obviously, it's like you know him from like the Allstate as an Allstate guy, but also like interesting because this used to be on Fox, and obviously like he was on he was the president for a long time in twenty four, which is also interesting because I didn't even think about it. I'm so stupid. Remember who played his brother? The actor who plays Aminadel is the actor who played his brother and um, who eventually became president for a little while in 24 too. So I didn't even correlate that till just now. Holy shit, that's so interesting. Huh. Uh, so I just, I thought that was neat. Um, I saw him in something fairly recently. I don't remember. I know the show uh, Reverie. I know that's one of the most recent things, but I feel like there was something even more recent. Aside from like the Allstate commercial, I feel like there was something even more recent I saw him in. I, I can't remember what it was, though. Uh, but regardless, it's like their dad showed up, which is kind of interesting when you think about it in the grand scheme of things, because it's like, well, he's playing God now, but it's like technically Neil Gaiman voiced God in the bonus episodes. Uh, you know, I, well, I, I was about to go down that route, but I, I won't. Well, because the thing I was about to say was, because it's actually interesting. Remember, because those bonus episodes were actually technically originally supposed to be like they were filmed ahead of time because they were episodes that could they were. I think they were going to be part of season three, but they were like, oh, let's cut these and put like make them part of season four. There are, uh, there are episodes that could fit in at any point in time because one of them was a hypothetical what if episode and the other one was dealing with obviously the whole thing with Ella. So that could have even in the grand scheme of things, even what what season four ended up being. Being on Netflix, those episodes still could have fill, filled into that because of the nature of what the episodes were. I mean, even the whole thing about like the Ella episode, it could still fit with the whole thing of like, because obviously Chloe's like, okay, yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff I can't really explain. It was kind of leaning into almost like, oh, these episodes took place after Chloe learned the truth about Lucifer. It seemed like that was kind of implied, but there was amb ambiguity to those episodes because they were supposed to be able to fit anywhere into a storyline. What, what could have originally been season four, but still, even with what season four ended up being like thick soup it's a whole thing it just it, that was kind of correlated to my head thinking about the bonus episodes and everything that's why i'm like i want that to come back because we haven't really done anything with that whole azriel thing like and the fact is that ella thought she saw a ghost and like how might that might all influence like ella's story in some shape or form like i want to kind of get back to that and see like that kind of be a part of her story so i'm wondering what her potentially learning the truth about lucifer and everything in the future like would that all kind of correlate and would it ever kind of circle back around but regardless this is where we end up, you know, at the end of part one. Obviously, once again, it is a thing of, like, you can tell that this wasn't originally probably, like, the end point, but it's just kind of like, like I said, because this original season, like I said, they came out a while back, was supposed to be 16 season episodes, so it's like, you know, that's it. like I said, I have to look into it myself as to why they split up. Does it really matter? Not really, but, I mean, it does matter because it also matters in how long it'll be before we get part two and everything, but regardless... It, this brings up so many questions. What is Michael's ultimate goal? Like, it seems like his ultimate goal is to basically ruin everything for Lucifer. So that's what this is about. But how does he plan on getting Maze a soul? Does this have anything? Did he want to do all this because he knew it would finally bring their father out? But also at the same time, it's like... Because the whole thing made it seem like Michael was whispering in his dad's ear. So maybe his dad was listening, but maybe as much as he was kind of letting Lucifer and Aminadel do their own thing... 
he was let Michael do his own thing because he's like, okay, I want to see how this play out. But he's but he comes in all fatherly, like you know, boys, you know, I don't like it when you fight. So that's about it. But I'm like, maybe we'll finally get answers because obviously Aminadel's going to want answers. Like, what happened to me? I've been your loyal son. Lucifer being like, you made Chloe. Even Aminadel being like, you made Chloe. What was that all about? Luc- probably Michael being like, why do you care so much about Lucifer? Why is Lucifer your favorite son? I'm like, I don't have a favorite. You're all my children. I love you equally type of thing. And what's May's going to do in the presence of God, that's going to be interesting. But like I said, it makes you wonder, like, does Michael have the plan of, like, not only destroying Lucifer, but, you know, maybe, like, he, like I said, maybe bringing their father was part of the plan. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe even he didn't calculate that for, for that. Maybe he did Who knows what his grand plan was in the grand scheme of things but also like once again how is he going to get maze of soul i would assume it has something to do with if you get lilith's energy that was going to be it or maybe you know because whatever it was it had to be something that little uh that uh maze had to sign off on so it had to be a thing where it's like either because i was thinking like i would assume you'd have to take it from a human for it to be a thing but maybe not because I feel like if that was the case, would Maze really be okay with it? But for her, she's so lost and feeling empty. Like, she feels like getting a soul would actually fix her and make her feel whole and complete. But once again, like, Lucifer seeing the whole thing of, like, oh, you're a demon, so that's never going to happen. But it's like, him saying all that, like, makes me wonder, like, is there more to it? Because obviously for May, she's hurt too because it's like, you would rather keep a promise to my mom rather than to, like, you know, tell me the truth because that means my mom meant more to you than, like, she, because she feels like as the show's going on more and more, she feels like, oh, I, I used to be important to you. I used to be a close confidant, but now I become less and less and less important. I don't matter to you at all anymore because, like, he doesn't spend enough time with Maze to actually kind of, once again, listen to her, listen to her concerns, you know? It's like, once again, they've had their brawls over the course of the season. They've had their issues. Once again, her working with Aminado, that was all about going back to hell. Um, the whole thing with Kane because she wanted to make him suffer and everything. So um, it was about helping Kane, but also it was also about help, like hurting Lucifer because she was pissed at him about everything, you know? So... She has every right to be pissed and stuff like that, but it's just like, once again, Lucifer's so caught up in everything else, he's not really listening. So it's just, I'm so, so curious to see where, you know, the rest of the season, you know, what where part two of season five ends up, you know, ultimately taking us. So I quickly did uh, do a little bit of uh, light reading, and it does seem like it is kind of what I thought. The show was impacted by, like, obviously, once again, everything that went down. So, like, the back half of the season isn't finished. Who knows, like, how far they were into production and everything. So that's why, like, only this chunk of the season's out now. So it's probably be a while. I actually prefer them doing this rather than getting up to where the series is production wise like the last episode they finish and then leaving it there i'd rather you leave us on the cliffhanger like this because it's actually a perfect cliffhanger so it kind of worked out you know interestingly enough but you know it, it, so because of everything it will probably be a while before we get the rest of the season like i said it also depends on like how much of production was already done before they had to stop and like how much they have left to finish when everything eventually does pick up again because obviously some stuff is picking up some other things haven't Regardless, I'm very pumped for whenever part two comes out because I'm so curious to see like, all right, we've got eight more episodes. It's not like, oh man, there's only two episodes. It's like, no, we've got another eight episodes to deal with all of this. So there's going to be a little, probably a lot more twists and turns and complications, especially now that dad's finally popped up into the picture and everything like that. So I am so, so curious to ultimately see where all of this takes us in part two. I'm so damn excited. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.